so much fucked up shit to get into. Imagine a penis fairy. <laughs> Imagine Jake's penis fairy. Welcome to the yeah. Welcome to Dad Meat. <laughs> welcome to Little Stinkers, baby. I'm Michael Fucking Rainey here with Cal Donjala. Hey, everybody. Jake Furman Matera. Hey, hey. Jeff Simmons. Welcome back, everybody. We're back, baby. We're Man. back in the stew. We did it. Woo. I missed you guys. We just got back from our um, our trip to Nevada to California. Yeah. Boy, do we have fun. We did. It was and a blast. You know, it was a good trip if we actually missed each other in the last three <laughs> days that we haven't yeah. seen each other. Yeah. Feels like a new relationship. Like we just started porking. <laughs> just like, oh God, we babe, I can't wait up. to see you guys. <laughs> I'm so hard for you right now. What a fun time. I have a quick question for Hit me with uh, it. Jake. Oh. Did you rip like eight of the nastiest farts of all time on that plane? On that plane? Yeah. What the one uh we were right next to the bathroom. You know that, right? Do you think every person that shits is the exact same smell? <laughs> It wasn't me. You think it was a little old lady next to, to me? God, I swear to God, it was not me. All right. I, on, on the flight there, it was My me. whole row was blaming it on you. You got this motherfucker acting like Shaggy right now. <laughs> it definitely was. Huh? It was not me. Did you smell any, uh, like, just absolutely no. dumb farts? No, that must, have been the, that must have been the lady that was trying to talk to me. Yeah, you flight. think? Yeah, probably just floating she up to my eyes. seat and not next to your seat. So you no. had a stinky bitch next to you, Jake. This, yeah, this stinky bitch, <laughs> <laughs> stinky doggy next to you. <laughs> she came and sat next to me, and she was a talker. And yeah. I was like, I can tell this is going to be a long flight. I noticed you stopped talking. He was right behind me, the row yeah. right behind me, but I was the uh, window, and he was the aisle. Yeah. Did you get a middle seat eventually that yeah. stopped the conversation? Yep. That's what it Thank seemed God. like. Yeah. Thank God. Well, she how just, did that break that up? The, the if you move to the middle. Oh, so she, the new person, the last person to show up in our row was the middle seat. So that just ended the conversation. Uh, okay. It was like yeah, a nice divider. Yelling across the new guy's yeah. face, you know? Yeah, because she came in. She's like, I'm so sorry. Da, da, da. She's like, oh, I hope this stays open. And I was like, yeah, depends if I, you know, this depends if I like you or not. <laughs> and she's like, well, I like you. And I was like, ah, jury's out. And then John turns around. He's like, Jake, <laughs> stop flirting. <laughs> <laughs> I did yeah. have to stop him. It was annoying, though, because it's a red eye flight. Yeah. I have my neck pillow. I have a sleep mask. I look like such a jerk off just trying to get any bit of sleep before I come home to my right. kid's birthday party and I have to do that. And every time I take off the sleep mask, this bitch was also awake and staring at me like trying to like engage. And I'm like, no, Jesus, what did Jake? she want? I don't know. Oh my gosh. She wanted you. Yeah, I bet she did. <laughs> I, it's insane to initiate a convert in a prolonged conversation on a plane. Yeah. Even yeah. during the daytime. Yeah, especially before you're about to go nighty night. Yeah, yeah, I mean, acknowledge the person, establish that you're sitting next to one another. I barely acknowledge Dude. the existence of the person that sits next. To Will me. you sit down and not even say anything? Uh, I'm usually, I guess, the most recent ones. I've been the first one to sit down next to the window, and then mm -hmm. people just come in, and I'm already kind of looking at my phone. Yeah, I'll, just, yeah. I'll look over. But what to do? Cool whip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll <laughs> say that kind of cool shit. You know. <laughs> Never in my life have I said anything like that. <laughs> <You're cool. laughs> All right, well. Was that, I swear jur to God. Jury's still out on what the fuck I smelled on that plane. <laughs> I promise you it's not mine. I can do a taste test for you. Let me, let me oh, pull yeah. up. Well, I do happen to have some from yeah. the plane. Get my fart hose from back there, please. <laughs> We're doing ass to mouth here, baby. I promise you it's not me. We took a trip to Truckee, California, by way of Las Vegas, uh, to visit some of the Donner Party sites. We yeah. learned a lot. We experienced a lot. And uh, have a better appreciation for why those fuckers ended up eating one another. Yeah. It's pretty wild. Yeah. Yeah, major they, major fuck up. <laughs> a lot of names on that plaque. There were, yeah. A lot of names on the plaque. Almost as many names on the as on the Skankfest uh, uh -huh. lineup. <laughs> yeah. And a lot, lot of, of mics. names. <laughs> Still, luckily, me and John's name were on neither of those things. Yeah. So. Well, thank God we weren't on one of them. <laughs> but dude, and I'm also not so mad that we weren't on the Donner party either. <laughs> dude, Skankfest was cool, man. That was we a did. really fun time. Shout out to everybody that we met yeah. in person at Skankfest. Had a bunch of people in the chat from you the chat. You guys were all the fucking best. We met Pike. Met Benny from the chat. We yeah. met uh, Dunbar. Richard Franco was there. Yeah, uh, we met who else? Jeff and Hannah. Uh, so many other names: Steve and Greg, Murph, 
Tons of people. It's pretty Damn, awesome. You got mad names. In I was trying to write th- write them down later so I wouldn't for forget. You. But like, there was a ton of people I'm forgetting, and I'm sorry. But you guys are all so fucking awesome and made me and John's Skankfest experience so awesome. Yeah, you guys made our yeah. experience totally. That was fucking awesome. Thanks for all the. Hopefully drugs. next year. Still puffing on this my freaking uh, pen from Jeff and Hannah. There you go. There you go. Yeah, thank you guys for coming out. And uh, for those of you that sat home and uh, eagerly awaited our return, we're back and I'm ready to dig into this. I was disappointed about this. I was hoping we would see some impractical jer- jokers at Skankfest. Same. Dude, Same. How Kinda crazy bummed. was it that Joe Gatto was in town in the middle of us? Uh, yeah, he was there. in Vegas. Yeah, yeah. That was uh, a coincidence. We probably sh- well wait. I already have my picture with him. <laughs> I just completely abandoned Skankfest, the thing I came out there for, and I get to the fucking thing. Joe, can I get a picture with you? And then I start to post, and it's like, fuck, this is the Pokemon I already have. I gotta turn this fucking fan off. This is yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Go ahead. You turn that fan off. Oh yeah. And I I do want to shout out to Sergio and Enrico, uh, Lou. These are all real people that we met as well. <laughs> Just want to give you guys shout outs too. Uh, Good for you for dude, so many fucking down. cool people who we met, dude. Honestly, made it such a blast. And seeing Mike shine, man, uh, at that Philly it. show, uh, that was fun, man. The roar of the fucking crowd when Mike's name was—I've never heard. Like people went ape shit. Yeah, that was fucking. awesome. It was awesome, uh, man. Very sweet, man. Yeah, yeah, I, I really had a lot of fun, and I'm just very appreciative of everyone and everything. So, and I'm yeah, not dude. on drugs. <laughs> <laughs> the only drug he on is fucking modesty right now. Damn. Okay, damn. <laughs> you ready to flip that coin, brother? Yeah, you got some modesty on your nose still, brother. Oh, oh there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully there was no boing sound for all the people who have been incessantly <laughs> complaining <laughs> yeah. about yeah, it. Yeah, there's oh, some people fired up about the boing, <laughs> yeah. man. It's the one fun thing we like to do. Yeah, put it in the chat right now. <laughs> if, you, if, you were, if you're fired up Fuck. about the... Oh, no, look at that. <laughs> we back to murder, everyone. Damn it. God damn it. Yeah. If you Congrats, don't like Mike. It. Thank you. <laughs> it feels good to be back, man. And it feels good to just ease back into the bloodshed. <laughs> <laughs> I don't normally be doing this with my hips. <laughs> Most of our uh, our murder field trip was pretty low on the bloodshed, which was nice. Compared yeah. to the yeah. last two that yeah. have been focused on some of the most brutal murders of all time. Yeah, every now and again, we'll just get something where it's just like, man, that's pretty fucked up, and yeah. that, that is some wild behavior. Yeah. This week's going to be no different. Um, only, I believe, three murders involved in this one, but nothing too crazy. Okay. And uh, all the murders are relative to the Donner party. Whoa. Wow. I got Donner on the brain, baby. Damn. Did you see your doctor for that? <laughs> no should i do you need an edible for it <laughs> i can be your doctor brother all right i'll bend over and cough and you tell me how bad it is i can be your doctor brother i can be your doctor lawyer i can be your <laughs> but yeah i wanted to learn more about the donner party nice. because i was so fired up about everything we learned there and uh it's even funnier and more fucked up than i thought it was <laughs> Oh, you thought it was pretty funny before, huh? <laughs> yes, I did, man. You you didn't get it from that riveting movie that we watched in, in the uh, visitor center? Yeah, we went to the fucking visitor center at, at Donner State Park. The visitor center looks like it was built this century. Beautiful. Yeah, And we gorgeous. watched a movie from, uh, I think, the first uh, video camera that was ever made. Right before they created color television. Yeah. They had to add color afterwards. I took a nice nap. <laughs> and I let them tell me about what the movie was, and I learned a lot about it afterwards. <laughs> but yeah, what I did find funny is that the whole excursion happened because everybody just bought into what this dickhead, Lansford Hastings, recommended as the go-to route to bypass a significant portion of the typical trail leading from the Midwest to California. Yeah, it was to save 300 miles, right? Yeah. Yeah. And um, it probably seems like a lot when you're a thousand miles into a two thousand mile trip. It does. But if they had only seen a picture of the goddamn mountains they had to cross, <laughs> yeah. And the best part is, like that guy who wrote the book, The Emigrant's Guide, he had not even taken that that trip. Hastings never did that. He eventually, he eventually did after he was already hyping it, a- dude. After he already wrote the fucking book, which. What's Whoa. telling people to come out there and use this hmm. to bypass the normal route. 
And the reason for that, he was a a Confederate officer who had set up shop out in California, had some business interest, and considering how up for grabs California was at the time, he was just like, all right, I'm going to bring out as many people as I can possibly bring out here. And then one, try to line my pockets as much as possible. But also... With the book or like by getting them to pay him for the uh, his route? With a lot of different things. Uh-huh. And one of the things that I found out that was a goal of his was that he was attempting to to put himself in power in California, considering it was such a, a wide open territory. Uh-huh. And at the time, uh, the Mexican Mexican American War was happening, and the uh, U.S. military ended up taking control of it. But before that happened, he was like, "Why can't I be the fucking king of California?" Uh huh. So he was just trying to get as many people to come out to California as possible, just to try to establish himself out there. Gotcha. So he was trying to. This is basically fucking building the Walmart and oh, having dude. people move to the town. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> this is a bringer show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's That's what a bringer yeah. state. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, he had no idea that it was as treacherous as it was because there was one part where um, they had to cross through the Great Salt Lake Desert, mm-hmm. and and that was a departure from the regular route, right? It was. And they it was were only going like north. Hastings. Uh, the Hastings cutoff was, I believe, a ninety-mile cutoff, which. Um, which uh, diverted from the typical path out there. So it wasn't that big of a fucking, I mean, if you're driving, going by car, it's not that big of a fucking yeah. deal. But if you're hoofing it, and if you got fucking wives and kids, fucking yeah. oxen and fucking wagons and shit like that, it's a massive fucking deal. And I watch people, modern day people, fucking video of them crossing this desert, and it's tough for them now. Yeah. So I can't imagine how bad it was back then, because the floor, the, the uh, the ground that they were walking on, it's, it was like uh, it was crust like, and once the crust caved in, it was, it was like, just like desert gooey underneath. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which was even worse back then because they're like wag, they're dolomite fucking, or something like that. Like it's like real clay like. That is a black man. I've seen the movie. Okay, um, it sounds delicious. What <laughs> regardless? Does, yeah. And it was it, all their shit was getting caught in it, which made the fucking the journey even harder mm-hmm. than it should have been to begin with. Could you imagine trying to go for a hike with your grandma? Oh, Jake. Oh, my God. That's one of the things I wanted to get to first. So I one of the things I found out, too, is that the journey started not with any of the Donner guys. It started with a guy named James Reed, mm-hmm. which okay. I've heard it referred to as the Donner Reed party. Yeah, same. Which is kind of fucked up that Reed ends up getting left out a lot of the times. Uh, yeah, but did they live? Did the Reeds? I think the whole Reed family ended up living. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The Reed were, and the Breeds. And the Breeds. Yeah. They were the only two survived. families that didn't lose any Intact. members. That's yeah. insane. Right. Yeah. Yeah, to have one full, yeah. any full family, let yeah. alone two. Mm-hmm. So fucking James Reed, he was a businessman, and he was going out there with his wife and kids, and his he wanted to go out there for business purposes. His wife wanted to go out there because she had headaches. And she thought the uh, arid temperature, the yeah. arid climate would... Yeah, fuck off. Helper. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Hey, man, I people, mean, people are still dumb. <laughs> <laughs> but to make matters even worse, his fucking mother-in-law was this woman named Sarah Keys, who was 70 years old, and she was stricken with something called consumption, which is what they used to call tuberculosis. Okay. So imagine having to drag a bitch with tuberculosis along <laughs> for hundreds of miles to California. That's funny. You know Doc Holliday? Yeah. He actually moved to this town in Colorado, not far from Aspen, something uh, Springs. uh, Colorado uh, Springs? uh, Maybe Canyon, Glenside Canyon might be called. Uh, The doctors recommended that he move there because there's a lot of hot springs and it could help his tuberculosis, but the sulfur from the hot springs ended up making it much, much worse and killing him. He deserves it. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) How dare he try to ease his ailments? Yeah, this old bitch tagged along. We got a moth in here. Oh, cool. This old bitch tagged along. And tuberculosis, you could fucking get, you could spread it by fucking breathing, coughing, fucking singing. Jesus Christ. Imagine wow. you're with a sick old bitch in your wagon, and she starts bursting out, <laughs> a little bit of Erica <laughs> in the sun. <laughs> you would have to find a rock and end her. 150 years before it existed. <laughs> Did they know it was that, uh, that... It's uh, Manifest Destiny number five. <laughs> <laughs> Did they know it was that contagious at the time? 
Probably not. Okay. Dude, could farts give you tuberculosis? That's a great question, Jake. It's a great question for whoever you were sitting next to on that plane. <laughs> Jake, you should have flipped up your sleep your sleeping goggles and be like, Can uh how you say uh <laughs> and you don't speak English and you're speaking English to the lady. Uh, como se DJ farts, uh, I give you tuberculosis. <laughs> also, I love how Mike turned him into sleeping goggles. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but the Reeds, they had some money. They had a very nice wagon too. They had a fucking oven on the wagon. They had bunk beds on the fucking wagon. Oh shit! Yeah, his um, one of the kids called it the Pioneer Palace car. Nice. I think that might have been referenced oh, in the video yeah. we watched. Yeah. yeah, I did catch that. Um, an <laughs> oven that seems incredibly dangerous. <laughs> Jesus Christ! And dude. what a burden on the fucking animals that have to drag that shit. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> there was uh. There was one point where the animals just started running away. Really? Yeah. They were just tired of it? And they were it like, was, it was, just, most of them got away when they got stuck in the desert too. Damn. Oh my oh. God. Worst fucking time. Dude, it, wait, it's so fucked up watching people now try to get through this fucking desert. Are they doing it with just a backpack when you see them do that? Yes. Okay. Yeah. The video I watched was just three people trying to make it through the desert and, um, yeah, there's actually guideposts like denoting the the fucking um, the Hastings Pass. Okay, do they so get stuck in the mud still, or is it they're not heavy? They enough? show you there. You make an indent as you walk through, yeah. and I guess it depends what time of year you go there. Uh huh. So whatever time of year this was, it was enough to make an indent, but it didn't seem like it was enough to slow them down. Gotcha. But even so, it's like all you can see for miles and miles on end is just even more fucking desert. Yeah, that's a scary hike. I would not want to do Terrifying. that with my water yeah. source. And we walked through through Donner Pass, which was treacherous enough. Like I was fucking winded, and then yeah. we walked through the um, the fucking railroad that they built on the side of the mountain there. We drove to the top of it, <laughs> and I was winded. <laughs> it was bad. <coughs> that railroad was insane. That was pretty fun, and it was pretty spooky at, at a lot of different parts. Were you guys affected by the elevation at all? Did you feel were you short of breath from being a mile high? I think I'm too dumb to notice. Yeah, same. Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean? Like, if you were having trouble, you would just attribute it to something else? Well, I was sick, too. I'm Shit, I might have had consumption out there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I also didn't notice anything uh, from the altitude. I felt oh, good. I'm, I'm glad. You looked good. Thanks, bro. You know, all these cigarettes I smoked ended up <laughs> yeah. making me able to help a hike John, at John elevation. was our Hastings, man. Well, no, Hastings is a piece of shit. You were, like, the good guide. Yeah, I'm the guy that actually help people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Took you get back to the van. <laughs> You're a uh, benevolent Indian. Thank you. You're welcome. I think it's a compliment, but coming from you, you for now it tell. is. You gave me a very nice compliment when we gave each other trail names. Uh, I don't want to talk about the trail names, Jake. What did you get? <sighs> he called me Sludge. <laughs> And then I changed it to Hot Sludge Sunday. Right? Yeah, it was just very it's a little flattering. sexier. That's Quit for sure. We're complaining. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What did I call you? The friendly wolf. The friendly wolf. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's very nice of you. Because even though you're friendly, you're still a wolf, and you're fucking scaring people out there. <laughs> and <laughs> Thank you. every person we passed, Mike was hitting him with a full fucking "Hi, how are you today?" <laughs> <laughs> like we were taking a fucking alien around learning to speak English to people. I wouldn't know. Hello, how are you today? It's like, Jesus Christ, Mike, give him a smile and a howdy. You just keep it moving. It seems insane to me not to look people in the eye and greet them. Well, no, nothing that requires an answer when you're on trail is the best way to be okay. about it, you know? So a howdy? Howdy is what right, I like to I'm stick learning. to. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't know because... Hello, how are you today? <laughs> I was. Are you going to stop and talk to them like we got somewhere to be? I was 300 yards behind them at all times, so I didn't. I missed all of this, but I could hear Mike doing the greeting from that far back. Yeah, we would make Jake scream every fucking 100 paces just to know that he was still alive back there. But the Reeds, they started out in Springfield, Illinois, and the Donners joined them in Independence, Missouri, yes, which seems to be the jump-off point for right. all of these treks out west. That was like the last stop uh, by the Mississippi. Okay. Independence, Missouri, right? That makes sense. Yeah, I think yeah. everybody, most of these parties left from there mm -hmm. and then like came from Chicago and then all these other places, Independence, and then they would get on the Oregon Trail from there. Dude, it was nuts to me how many babies were on this fucking trip. Do you remember reading like the, the list of casualties and how many of them said one next to their name? Did they have ages next to them? Yeah. 
Whoa. Well, I might, I might be thinking about uh, a different like, graphic memorial. that I saw. Uh-huh. Damn, yeah. How many? Like dozens oh, dude, of one-year-olds? I don't know about dozens, but I would say minimum of 10. I mean, but how long do you wait? You know, if you have a fucking baby, do you wait another year and mm-hmm. everything's already, all the gold's already taken out there, you know? True. And I think, I think the plan was to make it out there in four months. Right. Yeah. So that they could, they could bypass, get there at the end of fall, bypass the winter entirely. Mm-hmm. But naturally, shit's going to go wrong anyway, but especially when you're taking a fucking unknown path. What is it for me? When you said, it's the Reed, the Reed family all survived. They're the ones with the palace, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do so you clearly think, had the most money. Yeah. Do you yeah. think that's why they survived? They kind of promised money to like leave them alone and give their family priority. Like if you just fucking let us eat your your dead son, we will give you fifty dollars. I think they got lucky, man. You think yeah, it was just yeah. luck? Mm-hmm. I mean, they might have had more supplies than anybody. Yeah. They could have lasted longer before they had to resort to. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. But also, uh, the video we watched led me to believe that only a select few people uh, participated in cannibalism. Mm-hmm. Not everybody did it. And there were only two murders. The the two fucking um, Indian guys. Indian right? guys. Yeah. They were the only ones that were murdered. Mm-hmm. And they were murdered specifically to be eaten, right? Yes, by, the- by a guy named William Foster. Mm-hmm. Well, do you know the guys' names? Were they Wolfinger? Was that one of them? No, it was uh, Lewis and Salvador. Okay. <coughs> Like yeah, they made up names. There were there was a, there was an old guy named Hardcoop. It's like when you call customer service and you get uh-huh. George, <laughs> yeah. very clearly not a George. Yeah, in Indian accent, so thick that you think it's coated in gravy. Indian gravy. <laughs> <laughs> now we're all hungry. Way to go, Dad. Now I got to stop a Wawa after Guess this. Yes, we have to eat each other. Oh yeah, Wawa. <laughs> but yeah, um, Independence Missouri was the starting point for both the Oregon and the California trails. Um, they were joined by the Donners in Independence, Missouri, and George Donner, who was the patriarch of the family, uh, he had a, a lovely wife who had a very attractive name. You know how horny I get for these lady names. You do. Your penis wiggles for names. It does. Want to take a guess as to what this lady's hot name was? Annabelle. Clandis. I do like that. That made... <laughs> My butthole wink, John. But no, this lovely lady's name was Tamzine Donner. Tamson. Tamson? It's I've seen it spelled as T A M S O N and also T A M Z E N E. Okay. I'm gonna go with Tamzine. Yeah, I'm gonna go with Tamzine too. Actually Tamzine's my girl now. <laughs> I you, don't need, think you need so. to step back. <laughs> you need to form your own party. Don't ever talk to my wife Tamzine again. <laughs> I brother, I will fucking kill you. <laughs> All right, Tamzine's yours. And uh, our first dinner together will be your remains. Ooh. Could you imagine uh, being a man named Stu on, in a diner party? <laughs> <laughs> We're having Stu for dinner tonight. <laughs> what? Oh, no. I think I'm just going to go get some more firewood. <laughs> So when they were there, they found out about uh, the uh, the Hastings cutoff. They're like, "Yeah, I guess we'll fucking do it." They found they found out about it in Independence. They were aware of it. Now this from guy, Hastings himself at the time. No, Hastings was in California at the mm, time. Damn. He had already gone out there, even though he didn't take his own route. So he had a, like a street team. He was in California. Typing his shit up. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Eventually, there's a guy who is a friend of James Reed, who becomes aware he, along their journey. They meet with this fellow. And he's like, yeah, definitely don't fucking do that, man. Yeah, warned it's, him it's against barely it. barely passable uh-huh. solo, but you're definitely not going to be able to do it with all the motherfuckers you got with you. But he's like, uh, we're kind of doing it, man. And with James, uh, or uh, what was the Donner patriarch's name? Richard? George. George Donner. Yeah. He was, uh, he was like 70 years old, right? He was the oldest member 62, of the party? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, he was older. Wow. Only 62, okay. I think somebody else in the video... But, uh, was older but dude thinking back to that time like that's really fucking old yeah yeah i know fucking um hastings he didn't live that long i would say he only lived the early 60s i wish i had his exact age on me i usually keep that thing on i know yeah we must have left it on the plane or something (laughs) (laughs) but uh yeah that 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 was gonna come poor guy it's not a poor guy but he did show some uh a bit of a conscience there was a point he was leaving notes for them. So 
it seems as though like he became aware that they were going out there, and as time progressed, he became apprehensive about this massive fucking party going out there because by the time they all took off, which was May of 1846, there were 87 people a part of this party. Jesus, a part yeah. of the Donner party. Yeah. Yeah. And weren't they behind another group by a significant amount? I think there were other, or that maybe Hastings was taking another group over his cutoff and uh, the Donner party was too slow to be with that group. And oh. I think at some point he promised to come back. And help them, and then said, "Yeah, I'm not doing that." Okay, because at some point Hastings does like start leaving notes for them in different towns where they're going to eventually pass through. No, is he just nailing something to like a fucking rock, and they're I supposed to find it, or is there a guy that's yeah. delivering it? My, I hope they find this note. <laughs> <laughs> my my interpretation is of that was that maybe there was some kind of like fucking general post or something like that where yes, yeah, people would have to pass through. Kind of yeah, thing. yeah. All right, that makes sense. <laughs> here he here he. God. This feels like that Simpsons monorail episode. I know a quick away, boys. <laughs> <laughs> Fortunately, uh, not long into the journey, maybe two weeks into the journey, in Marysville, Kansas, Jake, they experienced their first group casualty. Who do you think it is? Miss Consumption herself. Sarah Keys. <clears throat> oh. Yeah, unfortunately uh, for Miss Keys, uh, God changed the locks on that bitch. <laughs> 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 and ended her life. <laughs> there weren't any locksmiths in the daughter no, party. No. No. And spared the rest of that group that old bitch's existence, man, because what a burden. Yeah. Thank God she didn't spread that goddamn disease to everybody else. Yeah. Just a nightmare lady. Just imagine being rid of her. <laughs> yeah. Everybody feels a little bit lighter. Mm-hmm. A lot lighter. <laughs> but, she, uh, was she the only... Uh, she was the first one. There, there are more along the way. There is, um, her death is actually kind of the start of their issues. There was, not long after she died, the captain who was leading the wagon train resigned. It was a, a guy named William Russell, and he is relieved by a guy named William Boggs. So there's already beef amongst them. Now, there's Willie beef. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> so the captain of the train leaves. He did. That's a, that's like League of Their Own when the bus driver just walks <laughs> off, throws dirt in their face, and storms away. So after the uh, the fucking uh, captain exchange, they make it to Wyoming, and this is where James Reed's buddy, uh, James Kleiman, that's the fellow's name, James Kleiman meets up with them, and he finds out that they're taking the Hastings cutoff. He's like, dude, you definitely do not want to do this. You are not going to be able to get through this. And Hastings leaves his first note for them saying, like, uh, you guys might want to... I want to take the traditional route, maybe. Yeah. But they're just like, fuck it. We're already falling behind. We have to fucking bury this old bitch. We already had two fu- two fucking wagon trail captains. Yeah. We got to keep going. So they keep going. Um, There are people who break off to take the route that's recommended. <laughs> From the Donner Party at this From point? From the Donner Party, okay. yeah. There are some that, that, that take that route, but most of the people stay with him. And... um. They get further into Wyoming to a point called Fort Bridger, Wyoming. There's another note for them. And it's Hastings saying, hey, I'm going to meet up with you guys at some point. So they think, oh, cool. This guy's going to fucking walk us through this shit. Mm -hmm. Even though I don't know that he has any intentions of doing that. You think even when he wrote that note, he could have just been fibbing just to keep them going that way? Yeah, and I also think maybe from a liability standpoint, like, if something fucked up happens, he could say, like, hey, I clearly left a note saying that I'm on my way back, even though something might have came up. Uh-huh. So, yeah, I, I don't wonder, know. I don't think he was probably worried about much liability at that point. That's kind of smart, though. I mean, just covering all his bases so I his guess. boss doesn't see it. <laughs> He's also, his own boss. Yeah. <laughs> There's no oh, HR shit. department for the Hastings cutoff. And also, this is the time where I think a person's word means a lot. Yeah. Right. And reputation means a lot. So if he's somebody who has bigger plans for establishing himself. Yeah. You know, it does show some kind of uh, perceived integrity. Yeah. If he's trying trying to get a town of like a 500 people together and he's responsible for 90 people's deaths, that doesn't look good. Yeah. Yeah. You're fucked, man. Yeah. So it seems as though he's at least putting on a good face Mm -hmm. and saying that he's going to help these people along. So by the end of July, there are 74 people in this party. There's 20 wagons carrying these fuckers around. 
So there's still a considerable amount of people. Only a handful had left to go the traditional route, Jake. Okay. Hey, I just want to let you guys know of something cool happening in Philadelphia uh, in October, running Thursday through Sunday, the rest of the month. Founding Footsteps is a cool trolley tour, city-owned, BYOB, the only BYOB trolley tour in Philadelphia. Hell yeah. They're having a fun uh, Bad Things Happen in Philadelphia true crime tour. Ooh. You can go on now, again, through the end of October. Uh, you can just see some of Philly's most heinous little stinkers, basically, uh, with some live storytelling, some live music. And I don't know. They play clips of serial killers like H.H. H. Holmes and a bunch of cool shit. That sounds pretty cool. Very cool. I've yeah. been on the these trolleys before. Yeah, we've done stand-up on them yeah. before. And this seems like a pretty cool twist on it. A nice little spooky October treat. Yeah, t- Tim, the guy who runs Founding Footsteps, he's the man. He does a lot of stuff like... He does a Christmas one. He does all this stuff. But this one's right up our alley. It's a true crime tour. And it's worth, if you're in the area or if you're coming to Philadelphia sometime in October, now's the time to come check out this thing because it's going to be awesome. Where can people buy tickets to this? Uh, I think foundingfootsteps.com. I think so. I'll Google it right now during the ad. I'll look it up. But, uh, I yeah, I don't know. These uh, tours are especially good for people who can't go more than 45 minutes without a drink. Yeah. <laughs> you can bring yourself a little six-pack on there. You can bring yourself a 30-pack. Yeah, you can do whatever the fuck you yeah. want. Yep. It's the city that founded freedom. Grain alcohol. <laughs> Foundingfootsteps.com is oh, where perfect. you can go to buy tickets. That sounds like a very cool tour. Yeah. So check it out, and, uh, yeah. Enjoy the rest of the show. Running through the rest of October, I think, maybe. Yep. Um, two weeks, a week later, he leaves them another note. They're joined by more people at this point. So they're in, U- they make it to Utah. Um, they make it to an area called North Weber Canyon. And at this point, they're joined by more people. And this is where they have 87 people. And they have, there's a total of 23 wagons bringing everybody along. And one of the, one of the, um, the groups of people joining them are the Graves family, which we ended up seeing there. Whew. Saw a lot of Graves their names. nudies online. What did we see? Their cabin? Or, uh... I remember seeing their names scratched into yeah. the... Uh, yeah. I think... Into the deceased side mm. of the rock. Yeah. On a good day, they could cover up to 12 miles. That's fucking insane. On a good day. I know. Dude. On bad days. That's a bad day of hiking. 12 miles. It's like you didn't really go far. <laughs> yeah, man, dude. That sounds like a great day to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I really put it in fucking low gear when we were hanging out. <laughs> On the bad days, Jake, they're only covering maybe two miles. Which Jesus is Christ. Just fucking don't even move for the day. I know. Just take a yeah. rest day if you're only getting two miles. Yeah. Oh, well, that's because the, the sludge that they're getting through and shit. Yeah, and that's going to become more prevalent as they get deeper into this fucking desert. Mm-hmm. The, the desert's in uh, fucking Utah. Yeah. And as they get deeper and deeper into there, as they get deeper and deeper into Utah, they got to abandon some shit just to kind of speed up the pace and to kind of make up for lost time because they're really falling behind here. Provisions are getting low as well. So in addition to just being far behind schedule, they're really starting to worry about whether or not they're actually going to fucking make it. I think the entire trip, what did we say? It was 400 miles? Or did we not say that? From Independence? Yeah. No, it's got to be closer to 2,000 oh, sorry. It, yeah, it was over 2,000. It yeah. was 2,500 miles that they have to cover. Which is, dude, when you look at the fucking map and see where they ended up and where they had to go, they did not have much longer to go. Yeah. 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 So I don't know about you, Jake, but that gives me a raging sadness boner. Those are my favorite types of boners, Mike. What are some of your least favorite types of boners, Jake? Uh, just full happiness boner, you know? That's your least favorite? Oh, That's yeah. on the list of least? Yeah, because it's always like if I'm happy in public and... Yeah, of course. Yeah, you, you see a balloon. You can't have that happen, yeah. No. You see a balloon, you know there's oh, a kid man. nearby. Fuck, <laughs> I'm so happy. <laughs> Where there's Get smoke. rid of that fucking balloon, kid. <laughs> it's for your own good. Yeah. Where there's smoke, there's a 12-year-old fire. So at this point, we're reaching the end of August, and they're reaching uh, the Salt Lake Desert in fucking Utah, and they're really struggling. This is the point where their circumstances really start to break some people. They have fucking oxen run away. 32 of them are, are gone. 32 oxen? 32 oxen just are, are fucking taken off at random Jeez, points. And there's probably, what, like four per wagon? 
At least two per yeah, wagon. Yeah, that makes right? sense. Yeah. yeah. Even the oxen are smart enough to know to run away. Yeah. We'd be better off here. Yeah. So it's they're dealing with low provisions. Um the oxen are probably they're fucking starving. They yeah. don't have any fucking water. They're overworked. I mean, they are there's gotta be some solace in the fact that that old bitch died. So that's, that probably gets them through a day or two. But aside from that, the man. The oxen are happy about yes. it? <laughs> you think an oxen wants TB? Even the oxen hated this bitch. <laughs> um, at the, at, by late August, they have about 600 miles to go. Now, they, got, um, they have 600 miles to go. And when we get into October, that's when they're getting into Nevada. Okay. And as they get into Nevada, there's a major incident at the beginning of October. There's a guy named John Snyder who's beating the shit out of his oxen. And James Reed takes umbrage with it. He starts fighting with this fucker, John Snyder. He stabs him to death during their argument. Whoa. The group has to decide what they're going to do with this fucking guy's punishment. <coughs> Let's eat him. Uh, Is that boy, what they do? I no, wish... give him a little bit of time. That's oh. what they would have done. Oh, I bet they fucking regretted casting him off. Well, yeah, dude, he's he seems like such an honorable man that he eventually comes back to fucking his family's still there. Yeah. Because the family remains a part of the party, which is, I don't know why the family just didn't go with him because they end up, the group ends up banishing him. Right. Whoa. And then he's the reason they get rescued. He's the, he is. Yeah. He's part of the, uh, the first relief party. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. So he makes it to Sacramento, which is where everybody was, was trying to get to to begin Jesus with. Jesus Christ. Could you imagine going there God. from where we were on foot? Oh my god, no. No. Like no roads. Jesus Man. fucking Christ. I can't Talk believe they did that. Talk about a comeback story though. Yeah, James Reed really fucking That's awesome. Yeah. Woo, happy Set, birthday in heaven. I think it says a lot about his wife's pussy too. Oh yeah, she had that good shit. Mhm. <laughs> 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 so he's banished and he takes off for Sacramento by himself. Well, I know one bitch I want to eat. <laughs> <laughs> he yells from the top of the mountain. <laughs> I am. I'm sure uh, animal rights were, a, if they were a thing at all, it was not very many people who gave, cared about him. So the fact that he killed somebody over mistreatment of an ox, I'm not surprised that yeah they were either going to kill him or kick him out of the group. Right. You know what I mean. And also, like, I think I, it likely has more to do with the practicality issue, where it's like, dude, we already have fucking oxen mutiny. Left and right, man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> please, yeah. dude. Please treat these fucking things with respect. True. Yeah. Just for the sake of Sacramento. Once we get to Sacramento, fucking kneecap them. <laughs> I don't care what you do to these things. <laughs> I'll help you. <laughs> I'll bend over next to one, and you can push them over me. <laughs> I'll I'll film whatever you want to put peanut butter on. <laughs> Just get these fucking things to Sacramento first, and then we'll talk. Um. So James Reed takes off solo. And there's a guy, the, the guy that I mentioned, Hardcoop. He's the next step, death. He's an old man who ends up with fucked up feet. And he's going from, people are just like, dude, you, you just, you're holding us back. So he's going from wagon to wagon trying to get somebody to take him in. They're like, dude, we don't have room. Oh my God. We're going to have to leave you behind. Ride. He's actually has to walk the entire fucking way. They leave him to die. Whoa. Was he like, how many people didn't have a fucking wagon to sit in that were just walking the I whole time? I wonder if he was one of the people that just happened to join the group. Uh-huh. Damn, dude, and they fucking Forrest Gump on the bus them. Can't sit here. This is where my oven sits. I couldn't, <laughs> let you, I couldn't dream of letting you sit where my oven is. <laughs> if you sat there... Where would my oven go? <laughs> but also, I don't know that it's a case of he might not have had a, a wagon to go to. I think there's got to be a significant portion of the day where just to give the animals a break, where they're just like, look, you guys fucking walk a few miles yeah. Yeah. just to put some ease on these fucking poor things. Yeah. But he couldn't even do that, so they had to leave this motherfucker behind. Damn. Fuck. That could just be me on a bad day of gout. <laughs> That's that, you're the first one I thought of when I heard of this motherfucker <laughs> got left because his feet were fucked. John, you were drinking fucking <laughs> pig wine every goddamn <laughs> night till two in the morning. You know your foot's going to hurt eventually. We don't have room for you. Our oven is on. <laughs> That's got to be the worst when you're begging to get on a fucking wagon, but you could smell apple pie. <laughs> 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 uh, 
Oct- we're getting into October now. On That's got to be the worst death, by the way. Just yeah. being left, be left behind. Yeah. Left yeah. with bad feet. Probably got picked apart by an animal before he actually died. Dude, there's Whoa. some there's some wild ass Indians out there too. Uh-huh. And shortly after they leave this old motherfucker behind, uh, the Paiute Indians end up killing a bunch of their oxen. They end up killing like twenty of their oxen. Oh, that seems anti Native American ethics. But I wonder if they did it just as a way to dissuade them from encroaching any further into their territory. Yeah, probably. They didn't know where the fuck they were going. Yeah, I don't think they were like Native American pranksters, like cheap jackass. <laughs> no, no. Now go cut that ox's fucking head off. <laughs> oh my god, he did it. <laughs> um I'm assuming that's why they always teamed up and were in such big numbers because the oxen? Um, the the wagon parties, okay. the pioneers. Oh yeah. Because it's like if you were yeah. just one family, you're moving a lot faster, yeah. but you're susceptible yeah, you're to yeah. Indian attack yeah. if you're just mm-hmm. five a group of five. Okay. Chief Dak says hidden camera over there. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, hit him with the old fucking Dax, dude. You hit him with Dax, Kristen Bell's wife. <laughs> Did you see Kristen Bell in the movie? I've seen her in a lot of things lately. This guy thought Kristen Bell was everywhere in Vegas. Yeah, I did. <gasps> oh my Sergeant? god. Yeah, I saw. We saw. What was the uh, Ghost Whisperer was on the TV, and he learned that uh, that's what they they did the thing in Forgetting Sarah Marshall off of uh, her crime show where she had like animal instincts. Okay. Uh, so then after that, I just kept seeing her everywhere. And she was not anywhere. Damn, Jake. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He was fucking having a conversation with Violent J. <laughs> walks away and says, did you see I was talking to Kristen Bell? <laughs> it's like, bro, that was your favorite musician of all time. You didn't even know. <laughs> the fucking insane Kristen Posse. <laughs> <laughs> so as October progresses, more and more fucked up shit is happening in the... Um, the gravity of the situation is starting to hit everybody. So now people are dying. They're starting to become despondent because of all these low rations. They're fucking, they're, they've reached the Sierra Nevadas by mid October. Right. So it's a gorgeous time of year. Really is a nice time. Yeah. They pass the Reno. The at this snow point, snow is around the corner at that time of year. Actually, yeah. you know, it's funny you brought this up the day we were watching the movie, uh, of the Donner thing, the longest uh, winter. Yes. Uh, that was the anniversary of the stabbing death of Ed Reed oh, killing the... Ed uh, Reed, <laughs> the yeah. uh, oh, Baltimore yeah. Ravens safety. <laughs> no, you're, Ray, uh, whoops. No, you're thinking of Ray Lewis. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it was October 5th. Damn. Yeah. That just happened to be the anniversary of the stabbing of... So your timeline's right on. Do you yeah. know what today is? <laughs> it's our stab anniversary. <laughs> stab anniversary. <laughs> I can't believe you didn't scream from your seat. Stab anniversary when you uh, said the information. I told I, I was taking a little nap. I think it was before your nap. Oh, it was? It was when yeah. the man was giving the presentation. The guide. The guy that uh, <laughs> the, the guide I have to. The bearded okay, man? Yeah. Yeah, the guy Dark that hurt, the guy okay. that was working next to the um gift shop Bell. Yeah. when uh Jake uh, told me in confidence that he had to go uh, evacuate his bowels before this thing gets started. Uh, but loud enough for the guy to hear it and then say it to another co-worker of his. And then he came in and gave the presentation. Now, I mean... That explains why he didn't make any eye contact uh-huh. with me. I don't think he was that taken aback because, Jake, no offense, but you look like a guy who has to unload before any of that. <laughs> like any, any hour-long presentation, you look like... I need a solid 40 minutes before that hour-long presentation. Yeah, people just assume you're going to stone-cold stunner a toilet <laughs> before any 25-minute movie, man. I think I heard the guy whisper, you're on bathroom duty today. After he heard Jake say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what you did to that bathroom <laughs> remains the most fucked up thing to happen at Donner Lake. <laughs> <laughs> Just like that, I top the charts. <laughs> All right, so we're into mid October at this point. There's a guy named uh, Charles Stanton. All right, so fucking James Reed ends up getting to Sacramento. He's trying to round up men to go help these people out. But. He was there that quickly? 
Yeah, dude, he left in fucking what was this? August, maybe. The Where, stab. The stabbing was. Uh, oh wait, the stabbing was October fifth. All right, so by the end of October. All right, he's able to get there. So word so reads... He must have gotten a horse, right? He didn't fucking run there. There's no way. Like, God, this is so much easier without my family. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow. Although... All right, so... One way or another, J- Charles Stanton, a guy from Sacramento, is able to make way toward the Donner Party. Okay? James Reed might not be there yet. I wonder if fucking... Um, I think this is when Hastings... That's what I was just going to say. If Hastings yes. was the one that says, like, look, these people might need some fucking mm-hmm. help. So it might have been Hastings that sent him. He starts making his way uh, from um, Fort Sutter, which is uh, Sacramento. From Sacramento, and uh, he ends up setting... Uh, that's where I'm looking for. He ends up... Um, fondling. Setting sales. Fondling, yeah. <laughs> yeah, fondling, Molest, fondling his sales for the area which the Donner Party would likely be at this time. Okay. Um, late October is when James Reed reaches Fort Sutter. Okay. Okay. I guess you could do that on foot in 20 days. From the beginning From of the Sierra Nevadas to... Across the Sierra. Yeah, that would make days sense. Sacramento, yeah. How many miles would you guess that is? Um, Maybe 150. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. If you're power walking... And Probably more, but... You got a wife with decent pussy. You can end. do alone 40 miles a day. Thank you. You as a general, I meant Jake too. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Fuck you. <laughs> it's slight down yeah. incline for Jake, and he's got obviously rocket skates on. <laughs> Jake, are you wearing your rocket skates right now, yeah, man? Yeah, I'm wearing my rocket skates today. <laughs> All right, so by the end of October, James Reed makes it to Sacramento, and he's like, look, these fuckers need help. However, finding help. It's hard to come by because uh, any able-bodied man is likely engaged in this uh, uh, Mexican-American war. Oh, true, yeah. Huh. <clears throat> what is the... What's the smile about over there, Mike? I don't know. I'm just thinking about Jake's rockets. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, that's yeah, good. I have not been able about. to untie them. <laughs> They're still on. They look so good on you, man. Thank you. Can't believe we got those through TSA. <laughs> <laughs> they did pat. They did rub them down as promised, though. Oh, he keeps yeah. talking. Did about you it. ask for them to do that, Jake? I asked. I said, "Please pat me down. <laughs> Please swab yeah, me." Yeah. Did you? Oh fuck! We did see I a guy on roller in, skates. I was leaning into the guy. John saw me leaning into him. You were hamming it up with him. Yeah. You like to give the TSA a hard time. He it was, was like, like, he was like, turn around, and I just put my ass in his face. <laughs> turn around, stick it out. Even white boys got the shout. Thank he, you, sir. He was at my back already, so he wanted to see, like, my penis, basically. He's like, turn around, and instead of turning around, I just went like, right into his Ew. fucking nose. Damn, Jake. <laughs> yeah. So they're having trouble rounding guys up to come help these fuckers. Mm-hmm. So they reach um, fucking... Um, the Nike outlets of Sacramento. They do, yes. <laughs> yeah. George Donner, they ended up breaking one of the axles on their wagon. And George Donner, in trying to uh, cut lumber to fix this, ends up cutting his own hand. Mm-hmm. And his fucking shit gets infected. So now, in addition to not having food, this fucker's got to deal with a fucking infected hand. No Neosporin. Nothing, man. Damn. Jake, how do you think uh, you would manage sexually without two able hands? You know, that would take me out of the race for sure. Mm. Yeah, these are all I got. You don't want to know where these go. <laughs> where they go, Jake. I do. I know. I want to know all about those. those there has paws. to be a higher level on the Patreon where I explain mm-hmm. where these go. <laughs> I'm going to be a member of that level of the Patreon. I got to know where those things go. <laughs> so as we reach November, these fuckers get to where we just vacationed at. Uh, Truckee. Mm -hmm. Most of them set up shop at Donner Lake. So there were 81 total here now. 59 of them set up shop at Donner Lake. And the snow already came. That's why they stopped. That's why they stopped because they couldn't couldn't get past what became known as Donner Pass. Because it snowed fucking 15 to 20 feet. Just an insane amount of snow and and it would not let up. So 59 people set up shop at Donner Lake, which is truly breathtaking. One of the nicest places I've ever been. Yeah. It was a cool, cool place. And then... The Donner family and uh, some other people, there were 22 total. They end up setting shop at a, a uh, an area called Alder Creek, mm-hmm. which I think is like five miles northeast of of Donner Lake. 
So they were pretty far separated from the yeah. So from the group, yeah. My interpretation of that is like there was significant beef at this point. Okay. Yeah, like when you're fighting with your girlfriend and you guys are walking, you don't even want to fucking see them. Yeah, they're halfway up the block and you're just behind them with their yeah. purse. Yeah, well, I mean, I have snowshoes. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't want to put them on right now. I don't think I need them yet. Uh, Why don't you give these fucking toboggans to your other bitch? <laughs> Well, the Donners are probably kind of separating themselves from the other people because they made the fucking decision to take this route, right? That could be the case. Yeah, I mean, yeah. They, they probably felt like they had... Oopsie. Like, yeah. We're going to stay five miles over on Alder Creek. If you guys <laughs> need us, we'll be pretty hard to find. <laughs> For some of the people, they were fortunate. There had been... um pioneers who had gone out earlier that had built cabins around uh it was formerly known as Truckee lake i think yes now donner lake they had built actual cabins there so some people were able to occupy those other people were forced to create uh lean twos mm. which is probably the one that we walked to past because the the giant rock they uh, had a sign on it that it was one side of a murphy cabin i believe yeah they oh, said okay, that was yeah. the fireplace side yeah yeah so i would imagine that they built that um they, they built the rock or the cabin they probably put the rock together yeah. fucking idiot <laughs> glaciers made those rocks. how are you gonna talk to a man with rocket skates like that <laughs> yeah, how dare you i'm drive. sorry i'm so fucking right. sorry you burn me with your skate um <laughs> god damn could you imagine lucking out and just being one of the people that found a pre-established cabin mm. <sighs> Dibs <laughs> you, see you come across yeah. the hill You're fucking like 200 feet behind the guy in front dibs! of you <laughs> I'll fucking kill you over dibs yeah. Even the old man with bad feet Calls top bunk and is able to climb himself up there <laughs> Yeah hard coops like Are you still awake <laughs> Do you smell hot dogs Speaking of smelling hot dogs uh, Thanksgiving they eat the last of their oxen. Damn. Yeah. They probably should have thought ahead. The oxen should have thought ahead, too, when he was the last one. <laughs> that little motherfucker. Hey, where'd everyone go? <laughs> <laughs> By mid-December, more and more malnutrition deaths start occurring. Damn. So they're starting to lose more and more people. Okay. So people die and they don't eat the first person that dies from malnutrition. No, there's um all right, so by mid December there are fifteen people that create their own expedition. They're like, fuck this. We got a hundred miles to go till uh till Sacramento. We're gonna try to get there. Yeah. So these fifteen people try to make a, a run for it. Um over half of them die. So there are half of them died and seven of those people were cannibalized. Whoa. So that's probably the first instance of cannibalism okay. associated with the Donner Party. Seven cannibals there. All right. They go through. They get into the new year. And at this point, at Donner Lake, more and more people are dropping off. And that's when the, the cannibalism there <coughs> likely the begins. Same people that are doing the cannibal, like who are doing the eating? Not everybody. Um, <coughs> probably not everybody committed cannibalism yeah. there. Not everybody tasted the forbidden this, right, flesh. Yeah. This sounds more and more like the Philadelphia sports fan history, where it's like, yeah, a couple people threw batteries at Santa Claus, <laughs> but not every Philly fan. Yeah, You know what I mean? But it's hard to substantiate this, because even though there are relics that were recovered from these campsites, it's hard to get you know, an honest interpretation as to the extent of the cannibalism. Because, of course, you're going to be, if you're one of the guys that was found, you'd be like, no, nah, fuck that, dude. I'd... Uh, he fucking ate himself, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I told him not to do it. Dude. He was kind of fucked up when he was doing it. <laughs> Honestly, it, like freaked me out a bunch, yeah. dude. <laughs> I mean, it looked really good, but I wasn't going to do it. Um, I guess DNA technology is not there yet, but I think in the future, if you're if you're the uh, descendant of a cannibal, I think. Uh, uh, Ancestry.com will know. You think so? I think they'll know that they're... In time? The DNA has, must be affected by consuming your own <clears throat> Jesus human John. meat. Your great uncle was a cannibal and... Uh, <laughs> I think it's got to be... And also owned rocket we'll get skates? <laughs> so as we progress into the new year, by 
by mid-February, the first relief party from Sacramento arrives. And what they find is a fucking horror show. The first, um, the first sighting, one of the rescuers uh, describes it as seeing a ghost-like figure appearing. And then more and more people started emerging. And they said that, like, a lot of these people that were emerging were clearly just fucking insane. Whoa. So when they show up, like, people are either nuts and or barely alive. Mm-hmm. It's like Apocalypse Now. Because they've been there since October. Everyone's kind of gone crazy. Like, the, everyone's gone Marlon Brando at that point. I sadly have not seen the movie and oh, do not understand the reference. I have, but it's been so long, so I'm struggling yeah. to... Let's watch the movie real quick. Yeah, <laughs> real quick. Let's put it on. It's only three hours. Yeah. Um, yeah, so these fuckers... So they can't even take everybody, though. Because these guys, like, they could barely get through. Yeah. And, dude, this is fucking February. It's still winter. So snow is still fucking coming. Yeah. yeah. Even though this relief party is able to get through, they're only, they only have so much in supplies they can give these people before they have to fucking turn back and say, like, look, you know, we'll send more people and we'll bring more shit and we can bring this certain amount of people with us, but we can't take everybody. Yeah. And I imagine so, so many of these people are so weak that they're just like, you know, can I even fucking make it? Yeah, you know, exactly. a couple hundred miles. Yeah. Do you know how many uh, did people die between? I think George Donner actually died between rescue parties. Well, they took wound. his kids out first, and his wife stayed with him. Uh-huh. Yeah, I think the second, the third relief party was the one that reached Alder Creek, which is where the Donner family was. Yeah, and at that point. George Donner, he was pretty fucked up, one from starvation and two from the infection in his hand, Mm -hmm. where he was just concerned about his kids making it out, and the wife wouldn't leave him, the wife stayed with him. They both ended up dying there. Okay. Sad. Tamzine was a real one, though. She was. Yeah. You know, happy birthday in heaven, Tamzine. If if you can give out pussy in heaven, I would like to try some one day. My God, Mike, certain. Mike is certain Tamzine's pussy is... Off the charts. <laughs> you can't. You can't tell me that a lady who is named after a goddamn gossip site <laughs> doesn't have <laughs> good ass behind pussy. I ain't gonna tell you she doesn't. Mike. I'm not gonna be the one. Mike just shows up in the bedroom with a giant soda. What do you got for me? <laughs> but yeah, the. Uh, When the relief parties get to the Donners, that's March. In April, the final relief party comes. There's only one fucking guy left. This guy. Really? uh, Fucking Louis Kiesberg. One guy? Yeah. He's the only one that was alive for that third one to come. Yes. They didn't just leave one guy behind that last time, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, no, we'll send a crew back. Trust us. <laughs> well, it's I like mean, what you guys would do to me? Yeah, yeah, yeah we're coming, man. Yeah, dude, he, yeah, just give us a couple weeks. He was super old and nuts. We got to go tape three horses together. <laughs> 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 we have to invent. Yeah, tape. yeah. yeah <laughs> only one of the only one of the horses has rocking skates. So <laughs> we got to tape them to some others. Sorry, sorry, Jake. We're bringing the oven first. <laughs> <laughs> they saved the oven before they saved me. <laughs> but he's the last one, and uh, he he ends up getting a bad reputation for being one of the people responsible for cannibalism. Oh no! Yeah. Well, it's not like. Uh, well, wait. Was he one of the ones that killed the Indian guides? Was he no, that was William Foster. Okay. And he like chased him down in the snow, right? I think he like spent an entire day chasing those guys took off uh lewis and salvador took off when it became apparent that people were eating motherfuckers yeah so they were just like "Eh, not really our thing but they became the thing who wants indian for dinner (laughs) Uh oh i think it's our time to split i think it's gonna upset my stomach (laughs) (laughs) we're just gonna curry along (laughs) but two-thirds of the men died Two thirds of the women and children survived. Ladies are survivors. They are. Well, and that's because of their small frames. Yeah, in particular, that they didn't have to have as much and the calories men, to survive. Right. Yeah, the men are much more likely to succumb because they have less fat and, and higher metabolism. And they're probably doing mo- not to yeah. fucking, but they're probably yeah, doing they most are. of the day to day activity of sawing off people's yeah. limbs to eat for their family. <laughs> Scientifically, I think men always succumb faster. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I succumb first every time. <laughs> I actually don't know if my wife has ever succumbed. 
48 well, people ended up surviving. Which is insane to me yeah. that half the fucking group. Pretty good. Survive. Yeah, pretty, yeah, pretty good. That's an optimism. I mean, view. to survive outside and over the winter, I wouldn't do that. Even with fucking backpacking food, I'd be like, "This sucks." I'm just gonna fucking, dude, go try to kill an Indian guide real quick. We went outside to look at stars at the cabin, and I was eyeing John up like he was a turkey <laughs> dinner. It got cold fast. We had hot dogs inside. <laughs> oh, one of the gross things that I learned was that after they finished with the ox meat. They were forced to boil leather because if you boil it long enough, it becomes like a glue like substance. Eat it and it will fill you. Yeah. Like it's. Is there nutrients in it or no? No, but I mean, it is. That was like some dust bullshit too. They were boiling their belts back in the day. Really? I didn't know that. I think so, yeah. That just sounds like something uh, an old slut would say. (laughs) Mind letting me boil that belt? I don't. I honestly don't think uh, that last guy to get rescued or any of them should catch shit for. Except for the guy that killed the Indian guides. Mm-hmm. He did a bad thing. Did he survive, I wonder? I think he's still alive. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's 250 years old. Because eating human flesh makes you eternal. <laughs> they actually cut the ribbon at a Costco. <laughs> it's trucking. At the new museum. <laughs> they actually accidentally cut the guy's hand off. <laughs> I don't think. They should have been cool about the cannibalism. I think I so, think. too, John. Yeah. They would have died if they didn't eat people. They had to do what they had to do. Yeah, man. Why it's, not fish? Lake was frozen. Yeah, but you could cut a hole. That's a good point. There were some people who did try to hunt. Now, I think most of these people were farmers, mm-hmm. so it wasn't really their thing. There yeah. was, I think it might have been uh, James Reed who borrowed a rifle from somebody, and the deal was that he would split whatever he caught 50-50 with the guy who owned the rifle. Uh-huh. But... Because it was something that they didn't normally do. First thing he did was shoot the guy who owned the rifle. <laughs> I mean, should have. Yeah. Obviously. And Tamzine, uh, I learned that uh, she was quite the pistol with a pistol. No way. Yeah, she was a shooter too. Huh. So, I mean, at that, bears are hibernating. Deer probably aren't going to be that easy to shoot in that mm-hmm. kind of snow. Can't you go get a hibernating bear, though? Yeah, yeah, pickings? go crawl into a fucking bear den. <laughs> yeah. Next time we go out there, I'll you know you give it a try. Didn't you say you saw a bear den? Yeah, but they're, they're going to see it coming. Pot of honey. They're going to think they're being tricked when you try to get somebody to to take part in this bear hunting because if you ask one of those people to say, like, hey, let me borrow your picnic basket real quick, nobody's going to give up their picnic basket, Jake. <laughs> That's true. Well, n- no one's going to understand any of your references <laughs> because they've all been from the 1950s. <laughs> from the Donner on. era. <laughs> Would you, let's say you did not, by some miracle, you survived, but you mm-hmm. didn't have to eat human meat. This yeah. goes for both of you. When you got back to Sacramento with the whole crew, would you be fucking, would you be spreading rumors? Would you be talking shit and being like, this guy fucking ate a little girl? Oh, man, I would have a, a feature length about this shit. You would start the first People magazine, People <laughs> Eaters magazine. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I named after my late mistress, Team Zine. <laughs> I, I would I would spread rumors on your ass, dude. Yeah. yeah, you would spread about him. Yeah, you guys yeah. are fucking uncool, dude. Which, <laughs> what happens at da- Donner Lake cannibalism party stays there. Yeah, yeah. I don't think I. I don't know. I would. Th- I think I would probably just be like, it wasn't me. That's what I would say. It wasn't me, wait anyone. I didn't. You're pointing at somebody next to you. <laughs> I didn't eat any people. <laughs> But I know someone who might have. Yeah. <laughs> it's got to be so hard, though, because once you get in the town and you get a couple beers in you. Oh, dude, oh, yes. Dude. You can't wait to tell people yeah. about dude. surviving mm-hmm. the longest winter. By the way, I didn't eat any people, but. <laughs> you fucking know James Snyder? <laughs> you know the fucking Snyders? He ate his own fucking kids' brains. <laughs> just every going night, way overboard with shit <laughs> every night before in bed just a bowl of kids brains he was easy eating cereal out of the top of the kid's skull every morning <laughs> <laughs> it was just tree barking his own piss <laughs> but he was acting like it was this cereal this motherfucker was eating unlucky charms out of a little baby's skull <laughs> the spoon was made from the kid's femur oh <laughs> <sighs> Yeah, but uh, I would be telling on your ass and uh, <laughs> horrible yeah. tragedy, horrible yeah. tragedy that I, happened. I think a lot of them would accidentally tell on themselves too. Like if they went out to eat, be like, uh, "Yeah, let, let me get a, uh, <laughs> a a small pepperoni people." 
<laughs> I'm sorry, what, sir? A pepperoni pizza. No, you said oh. a pepperoni people. I, no, I no, did, no, 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 no. Yeah. No. Why, why, why would I say that as a person that su- survived the most notable case of cannibalism in the Western United States? <laughs> What's the hungriest you've ever been? Can you remember that moment? It happens every single day. Because <laughs> uh, I don't eat until 5 or 6 p.m. I don't wake up until one thirty, so it's not that long. But I don't know. I feel like I was pretty hungry yesterday. And that was it. I was the hungriest I've ever been yesterday. Damn. How did you fulfill that need? I begged my girlfriend to bring me McDonald's on her way home from... Mm. Um, Shopping? I think she went shopping. You have to sweet talk her like, ba da ba ba ba. I'm loving you. <laughs> hey, by the way, <laughs> if you swing by a McDonald's, I will have this. Fifth grade for me. What, what was, was the instance? I think it was just the last time I felt hunger. <laughs> 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 it is kind of a life hack to not allow yourself to feel hunger because you you experience such a wave of emotions yeah. that could potentially become regrettable. Oh, yeah. If you allow those emotions to, to parlay into behaviors. Yeah. We don't ever have to be hungry. I know. I try not to. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm usually not, except for that one time a day before I eat for the first time. I can get very angry. Oh, like dude. Like, whole I... level anger if mm. I don't eat. So this is all just to, to subdue that beast. Mm. You're such a nice guy. <laughs> yeah. You're the incredible bulk. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Mike? When's the last time you were hungry? Um, oh, no, the hungriest you've ever been. Oh, hungriest the hungriest I've been. ever been when I was in boot camp. Two different things, by the way. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> they give you a certain amount of meals, like when you complete the end of boot camp, which is called the Crucible. It's a three day thing. And um, I forget how many meals they give you, but I ate my last meal like the day before we were supposed to like start marching back to the base. Is it an MRE that you can eat yeah. whenever you feel yeah. like it? Yeah, and you rationed it yourself. Yeah, you did not do it correctly. I, I did as good as I could. So I it was like midday the day before we were supposed to like start hiking back to the base. And I was just, I don't know, I, I just have never been that hungry because you're, you're just expending thousands of calories. Yeah. yeah. And I'm just fucking starving. And they give you like an all-you-can-eat breakfast when you get back. Ooh, but you don't want to think about it because you're so fucking hungry. <laughs> yeah. I didn't even eat that much when I got back because Damn. I was just so you fucking can. tired. You're yeah. Tommy's so small by yeah, then. Yeah, so it's, 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 a really, shrunk. it's a really mean trick they play on you. That'd it, be, dude, in boot camp, I would ring the bell like in the first three hours. <laughs> I'm so hungry. There's no bell to ring. Yeah. <laughs> I brought my own taco oh. bell to ring because I'm so <laughs> fucking tired of this shit. Are we running to the border today? Get <laughs> on Taco Bell. So when you were hiking, you would see guys pop their MREs, right? Yeah. On that last day. Mm-hmm. You probably thought about smacking them over the head. And no, I would a little never bite of their that. pizza. I would. I would just load up on water. Yeah, that only as much water as I so far, though. Yeah. Did you have unlimited water on you, or yeah, you could keep filling it up? Okay. There's a. Um, they keep like this, like small trailer full of this, um, like tank, and it goes with you. Yeah, it just follows you oh around God, wherever you go. Filled with Oreos. <laughs> Damn, that's crazy oven. that they fucking the Oreo truck. Yeah, the Oreo truck. So how many? Three days, and they they only give you enough food to, like, two meals a day, maybe? I don't even know if it was that, man. It might have been th- three MREs. Ooh. But, so I mean, You could like, only really eat once a day, and you had to decide when? I think that's what it was. I could I could be wrong, but I think it might have been, like, you get one a day, and, uh, but, I mean, you would get a decent amount in there, and, like, it, it would get to the point, like, some of them have hot sauce in them, so you would just be drinking hot sauce just, just to for calories. taste Whoa. something in yeah. yeah. Oh my god! Some of the food was really good in the MRE too. I've had a tasty yeah. hot dogs are I've really had good. A, uh, chicken parm in an MRE that was There's pretty some good, good stuff, man. Yeah. yeah. Did you ever watch that guy's channel? He opens old MREs. I think you guys showed it to me when me, you, and Tim went uh, camping a few years ago. Tim had it. That yeah, that makes sense. Somebody sent him an old uh, uh, MRE yeah. with a. It's like a, Elio's looking piece of pizza inside. Okay. And I think I took a bite of it, and it was pretty stomach turning. Mm. I think you guys like finished the whole. I thing. don't remember. <laughs> did I? There was something else in there. They like did another a pizza snack. review on it. <laughs> <laughs> I think they did. Yeah, uh, but it was like I honestly don't even know if I took a bite. I might have taken a bite and spit it out. It was fucked up. That's nothing. Can, I think it was an expired one from like decades ago. Yeah, it's, that was like that's a sad meal. Yeah, that's a 
the pe- modern ones that you can buy at the bases now, <coughs> yeah, I think are good. Pretty nice, yeah. yeah. But yeah, that that's a sad one. That's a you're eating that by yourself and just yeah. thinking about what you don't have. That that pizza, that that's a mama leave me alone. <laughs> 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 Jeff's still listening. <laughs> got his ass with that one. And MR, what does MRE stand for? Meal ready to eat. Wow. You never had one? No. They're definitely I awesome. eaten one. <laughs> yeah. They're better than like freeze dried food. Okay. You I'll can do. heat them up too. I mean, yeah. there's little water pouches you could get that yeah. eating element. Okay. So like yeah, you open it up and it's Man. just like chicken parmesan and pasta and it's still that was like pretty as good. a kid the holy grail was getting space ice cream. Oh, oh yeah. Man. Whenever I got my hands on one of those, which wasn't often, like oh when when, when you go to space. Yeah, whenever I would go to space. <laughs> was it uh, the uh ice cream sandwich? Yeah, that's they what it was. had them at the Franklin Institute all the time. Yeah. I don't think I ever ate one. No? Was it just freeze dried? Mm. Yeah. It it was just I guess it was just fr- Freeze dried ice cream it still has the flavor, but like yep. none of the it's not melty. Yeah, or it felt yeah. like you were eating like a giant Lucky Charms marshmallow. Okay, yeah. Remember that uh, that lady from NASA who went nuts and drove in a diaper yes. to meet her boyfriend? I'll never forget her. Do you think <laughs> while that guy was eating her pussy, he would look up and say, "You know, this is what the astronauts." Eat. <laughs> <laughs> I think he might have said that. <laughs> uh, Houston, we have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> he comes up, he's got blood all over. <laughs> Woo! Hell yeah, dude. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, so R.I.P. Donner Party. You guys had a good run, man. You tried. They got so close, man. We did. We just went through so many fucking tour, not tours, but. We did our own tour, read the video, and we still didn't know most of the shit no, about the no. fucking time. Party. It's maybe because we read the video. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that video was dog shit, I must say. Yeah. It is dog shit. And honestly, it's so hard to take in a lot of information there because your surroundings are so beautiful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's so hard to find a place that has that level of tranquility where I, I don't. Like back in Philly, it's like yeah, hit me with all the fucking facts you can. Yeah, because I wouldn't have any dumb to inside and safe. Yeah. yeah, I bet you when the Donner Party first got there, someone said, "Man, I could die here. It's so beautiful." And everyone was like, "I know, right?" <laughs> and half of them did. <laughs> yeah, that's how beautiful it is. It was fucking nice. That was a nice place. One of the better um, state park slash national park yeah, gift really shops yeah. I've yeah. ever experienced. So much great stuff. I was picking up stickers left and right. Yeah, I, you know, I was surprised. It's a state park, not a national park. Mm. That was a nice surprise. What, um, how did they designate one as such? Um, I'm not sure. I, I, as far as I know, that just means it's California property, not federal mm. land. Yeah, which makes And the, it's managed by California. The museum, but that, that makes it all the more impressive because like that costs a lot of money to create that facility. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely the nicest facility, I think, state park wise. Yeah. But do you think there's ever times where like America's just like no this this we're gonna take this one? Yeah, yeah. I think uh, Joshua Tree was once just a either na- maybe a national monument or a California state park, and then oh. in the '90s, Bill Clinton made it a national park. Death Valley, I think the same might have been a state park before. Yeah. Um, well, any any park that the Clintons are associated with typically ends up being a uh, any valley is typically a Death Valley. Wow, whoa, that's uh, the opinions of Mike Rainey only. <laughs> <laughs> I have nothing to do with what he says about the Clintons. <laughs> talking about George Clinton. Oh, that's funky as all oh, hell. Man. Yeah, it should be a national park then because it's one nation under a groove, you know? <laughs> now we're talking. Yeah, it's getting real funkadelic. <laughs> now we're grooving. Now we're definitely not ending the podcast anytime soon. <laughs> yes. That's all I ever wanted, man. I just got to mention shit John likes when we're like, <laughs> things are slowing down. It's all I ever wanted. Um, I truly had a wonderful time out west with you guys. And, man, what a beautiful fucking place, man. What a beautiful we country, drove man. through some of the coolest fucking yeah. sh- Even Area 51. The Nevada desert is unreal. beautiful to drive through. Wild horses. Yeah. Better than anything around here. I mean, I think we're yeah, just used to seeing green trees. Mm-hmm. Everywhere, so it's a very drastic difference. Yeah, but it is just seeing mountains in the distance and all the wildflowers. Just you fucking turn a corner and there's thirty wild horses next to a man. So awesome desert lake. 
we got to see a, a, a nice dog. Near Area 51. Oh, yeah. The we mayor did. of Rachel, Nevada. George, George. the dog. Yeah. George. That little rascal got under a, somebody's truck and got a nice little streak of grease down his back. <laughs> <laughs> Classic Pepe Le Pew, dude. Yeah. Oh, that's what happened. I thought uh, he was pet by an Italian. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Jeez. They don't have any Italians there. <laughs> <laughs> that place is crazy. The the ch- I've driven uh, around Area 51 a couple times now. That was my first time experiencing low-flying aircraft. Yeah, that was kind of nuts. That was very close to us. Yeah. Yeah. You think they were trying to buzz us? I don't know what they do in those things, man. I don't even know if it was a manned thing or if it was a drone. Yeah, it just looked like a massive drone. Yeah. Yeah, It was huge, too. Yeah. Like, from the distance, we're like, oh, that's a drone. And then it gets closer. It's like the size of, like, one of those commercial flights that go across the world. Yeah. And then... Yeah, it was like carrying a Greyhound bus under it, basically. Yeah. (laughs) And it just, did, it was not, the physics of it did, didn't make any sense to me at all. The, the, well, that's why you don't build planes. Well, I, <laughs> you don't know what I do at home. Yeah. It was just flying so slow. I'm glad you chose not to argue with the man wearing rocket skates. <laughs> <laughs> I never do. 3D printed, by the way. We encountered a man on roller skates in San Francisco. We did. Yes. And you spoke to the gentleman. I did. I got, I got a nice uh, video with him. What would you say to him? I said, I love your arcade. Can I take a picture with you? Oh, yeah. And what, did yeah that's all it takes? I introduced myself. I said, hi, I'm Mike. I love your arcade. And I would, if you would take a picture with me, I would love it. Did the uh, normal behavior alarm go off? <laughs> hi, I'm Mike. I love your arcade. Can I take a picture with you? <laughs> <laughs> we got a real normal guy here. <laughs> I mean, well, I mean, consider the circumstances. I'm talking to a 65-year-old man on roller skates. <laughs> Yeah, I think I could fall for that for sure. Yeah, let's take a picture. Uh, well, in San are Francisco, so oh man, he probably thought I had an ulterior motive. Was he? Did he have a bandana hanging out of his pocket? That's how you Is know. That really? Yeah, I when you're walking that. through the park, make sure you tuck that bandana in. Hey, what's you're that gonna mean? get your dick sucked by a fella. Whoa! Yeah, that's how you. <laughs> Is can that have, for real? That's for cruising San Francisco parks. Yeah, a bandana. If you have a bandana, and I believe colors mean different things. What if you're in a gang? Do you need to get your dick sucked? I don't think any in? gang members f- suck and fuck guys, honestly. <laughs> I think gang members all. Um, they just stroll in through all the park. They're straight. There's no gay gang members. <laughs> just crip walking through the park like, struck out again. <laughs> <laughs> That's a shame, man. Oh, yeah? <laughs> would, you, would you have gone bandana shopping had you known that? Yeah, man. And just get the boys riled up. We would have been making <laughs> a different video then. Mm hmm. We would have been recording you busting a fella's cheeks or getting your cheeks busted by a fella or standing 69ing a fella. Oh, my God. Well, when in Rome. (laughs) We didn't get much time to explore San Francisco, but even parking our van in a garage still seemed shady and, like, I was worried we were going to get our shit burning into. What a relief when we got back and saw that all of our stuff was still there. Yeah. All Jake, the windows. you made me laugh so much, man. So as we're pulling out of the parking garage to head toward the airport, some jerk-off fucking Uber Eats guy parks his car right in front of the exit of the parking garage. Could there are a million else. other places yeah. where he could yeah. have done this, but there was enough space for us to barely get out, but this was clearly... A, a conscious fuck you. Yeah. The, the space you're talking about is pulling into the other lane. Like, not like our lane was completely blocked. Mm-hmm. And if you don't move fast, that, that gate's going to close on you. True. Yeah. Chop up the rental right. car. There's a blade on it. Fortunately, <laughs> Jake took a back seat to Furman because Furman came out. As John's pulling around this dickhead mm-hmm. who was parked in this worst possible place that he could possibly park, uh, John passes him. And I hear Jake spit on this guy's car. <laughs> Came from the throat, too. I'm sorry. I'm he's sorry. No, no, you don't have to be sorry. He's prob- no, he's probably a 1099 employee, barely getting by in this, nah, this city I of San mean, Francisco. That doesn't mean... Dude, if you're a fucking Uber driver and yeah. you are stopped, this is more of a passenger's uh, issue. But if you're on a one-lane street and you're blocking traffic, get the fuck out of the way. Yeah. Unless this person's in a fucking wheelchair, go back around the block if they're in a wheelchair. Yeah. Get out of the way. Yep. I'm on the horn instantly. You did the right thing. Yeah. I Just because he's a fucking 1099 worker doesn't I mean, mean he gets to fucking park wherever he wants. He's lucky we didn't smash his old fucking shit up. That's the thing. If I probably wasn't with you guys, I would have, Furman would have <laughs> smashed all the windows. 
We should have yeah. let you out. We should have gone around the block. Came <laughs> back. You're on top of it with a trash can. Yeah. Taking, ripping off the G from the Giardelli Square and just smashing it. How the fuck did he get up there? Uh, the, the rocket skates took him up there. <laughs> right up the wall. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Jake was acting up. We had fun. We did really have a good time, man. We got to... We did a lot, man. We did. We we went to Donner State Park. We swam in Donner Lake. Ooh. What a refreshing dip trip. that was, yeah. Except really for losing cool. all that money playing blackjack. I love blackjack. I know. I, I was pulling for you, man. You even found 100 bucks on the ground? Mm -hmm. Yeah. This fucking dickhead. Jake and I noticed a $100 <laughs> bill by John's foot as he's playing, about to sit down and play blackjack. And we're like, John, you dropped $100. And he looks down, looks at the $100 bill, and he's like, no, I didn't. That's not No, mine. I didn't drop it. <laughs> We're like, John, that's yes. not my hundred dollar bill, <laughs> dude. I honestly, I I think I was just drunk and smoking a bunch of weed that night. Okay, but because you had one money, mm -hmm. and you're such a nice guy, my first thought was that you fucking threw a hundred dollars down like that episode of fucking Saved by the Bell where Zach puts a twenty in the in the uh, payphone for the homeless guy. Yeah, yeah. I feel bad about not doing that now. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you no, for giving yeah. it to me. We right. lost it instantly. Yeah. We did go up, yeah. though. Yeah. Oh, boy, were we up. Ooh. Oh, my God. Remember being up for that I remember. few moments? God, Watching what? you two play blackjack, like, every hand, they're just asking this poor female dealer <laughs> what they should do. You know the dealer <laughs> specifically said to Jake, do you not know how to play this? <laughs> I don't doubt it, man, yeah. It was so fucked up, because on the video blackjack, I was fine. You play very differently when it's a fucking dollar a well, hand. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, like, I know how to play blackjack, but then when you're sitting there at the table and, like, They've got 15, you've got 12 or 13. You know that next fucking, like, they're going to get a 5 or a 6 every time. If you hit, it's going to be a 10 and you're going to bust. Yeah. So, like, I was like, I don't know. I want that 5 or 6. So I kept fucking doing it and busting, busting everywhere. And you bust. I, I, I kept busting. And, uh, yeah, I, I, I paid a price. It's fine. Yeah. We don't go there often but i hope we go there every year now <laughs> i did enjoy that that was the nice that was a uh, crystal bay casino yeah that was a cool yeah. little casino reminded me of rainforest cafe <laughs> <laughs> now in what way did it remind you of that the uh fake trees okay that were uh taking over the ceiling yeah i i guess they don't really have those in vegas casinos not that i'm looking around i like it i, I'm I didn't a, notice that a real dummy who is enamored by fake trees. I like that uh, you could find the restroom yes. and the exit. Oh, you could yeah. see and the exit. Yes. The, the exit of the casino had glass doors. The Golden Nugget was a nightmare to navigate. Yeah. yeah. Coming back there on acid, I was like, I swear I've been here before. Turns out I had never left. So yeah, you couldn't find the bathrooms or the exits, and it just like led you into another casino or that atrium with the the, the show playing. Uh -huh. Yeah, it was torture. One thing I do want to add about our trip before we go is that the house was, was a very nice lake house and John could have had his own apartment within this house. The apartment <laughs> was on the basement level of this house. Yeah, we don't, I don't think we talked about this yet. But uh, I assumed John was going to stay in there and I was the first one awake the next morning, I believe. And uh, well, It was up for anybody. You yeah. chose not to. For no specific reason. Yeah. No, all right. <laughs> yeah. What I'm getting at. You didn't want to be in the same house as your boys. The next morning I wake up, and as soon as I open my door uh, from my room, which is upstairs, I have a sight line into the living room, and John is sleeping on the couch. With my sleeping bag. Insane, considering everyone else is in a bed, which is why we got the fucking house. I fucked up, man. John was afraid to sleep in the apartment by himself. Because he was a little bit scared that another man was going to come in here and hurt him. It was two in the morning. I was drunk. I think we took mushrooms that night. It was a scary thing. You did it for every night except the last night. Two out of three nights I slept on the couch. That ain't bad. Do you ever sleep on the couch in real life? Did I ever sleep on a couch in real life? Do you ever? Here. No. Never? Do you ever I, sleep I, on the couch? I would say really up in, maybe up until maybe... Five years ago, I would sleep on the couch. Yeah, I used to sleep on the couch a lot, dude. It used to be very fun. So I had a nice, fun time. Got the TV going. I don't have a TV in my bedroom. It was but fucking fun. My issue isn't with sleeping on the couch. It's that you were scared. Yeah, that's fine. We can talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> you, can, you can fuck on me. I was scared as shit. Oh, what for some reason, yeah, I, I, for some reason I had just I gone camping by myself for two nights yeah. in the Sierra Nevada. 
So, you know, went down to like 35 degrees. Mm. The night. nylon tent. Yeah. And I wasn't scared at all. Do you think, but when, when I went out to the fucking minivan one night, or I think I went out and uh, we weren't allowed to smoke, so I had to smoke in like the middle of the street behind the house. And I went out there yeah. by myself. Very dark. And just for some reason, because all these houses are like unoccupied. Mm-hmm. And it just makes me think that wild animals know that. So I got real scared. So I wasn't really scared of humans. I was scared of going down to my little apartment and a bear being on the deck. Somebody's sleeping in my bed. (laughs) Yeah. I think I was, for the first time, scared of fucking coming across a bear. Jake, what would you have done if we could not find John and we were rummaging through the house trying to find him? We eventually make our way to the basement and he's getting butt-fucked by a bear. (laughs) Like, John, this will stay in honor pass, buddy. I won't say a word. (laughs) You guys will be blabbering about it in Fort Sutter in <laughs> two weeks. The video's up on Patreon now. <laughs> <laughs> now, you didn't stay down there because you were scared. No. Yeah. I no, like yes, the room that is what happens. Oh, you did? Yeah. So did I. You could have told me that, and I would have slept downstairs. I wanted the apartment to be safe and not scary. I slept the last night, and I'm... I'm really sad that I didn't do it both nights. I know. It was a nice place. I could have had such good night's sleeps. <laughs> I slept like... Sh- actually, the first night I slept fine on that couch. Yeah. It was actually kind of comfortable. Night two, not so much. Boy, did I have an immense fatigue sometimes when I was driving. I charge my battery all year for trips like that. Yeah. So I can go on five hours sleep. Mm-hmm. Some of those fucking drives down desert roads, I was like, mm, man, I wish there was a Red Bull station around here. Y'all ever wish for a Red Bull station in the middle Bull, of the yeah. desert? Yeah. Yeah. Damn, what would you do if you saw one of those little Volkswagen Red Bull cars on the road? Would you run it off the road? I'd be like, I know you guys give these out for free, <laughs> but can I just buy one? <laughs> I want to buy one. I can't wait to do our next trip. Um, I think I'd like to go to San Francisco and explore that a little bit more. Did you have a that was, fun time in the yeah, little That was really there? nice. I've I've never been there. Mm-hmm. And just a little bit that we got to explore was a ton of fun. There's was, so much there. I, I What I liked most about it was that it was a very uh, interesting, fucked up place. Mm-hmm. And yeah. we really only went to, like, the number one tourist spot. Yeah. It's like oh, the only walking around we did was yeah. the biggest tourist spot in the city. And you get to see so much in such a, a small area. Yeah, it was just a one mile. But it's, like, the best view of the mm-hmm. bridge and the bay yep. and... Alcatraz, Safest. really beautiful, yeah, yes, for sure, definitely. Are you worried about getting robbed in that San was, Francisco? That was the uh, not in that part. Yeah, that was the most safe I've ever felt, and I know it's terrible right now out there. Yeah, it's because there were no bears. No bears, yeah. Thank God, no wild animals. I was uh, pretty excited by the suicide nets under the Golden Gate Bridge. I had never yeah. seen them before. I hadn't either, and I I, I know that people yeah. go there to do that. And that was something that I was thinking about as we were approaching it and as we parked. I wanted to see, like, oh, what is the spot most likely for this to happen? Mm-hmm. And I didn't know they had those nets there. I was like, Ooh. like immediately. Uh-huh. Yeah. But yeah. They, so I don't. I really don't understand. I mean, if you jump and you fall into that net, it's just kind of like a little discovery zone obstacle <laughs> before you. Like, yeah, is there a net under that net? Because I think you can there's climb another out net. Of that. There's another net that drops on top of you <laughs> and you can't get out of it. <laughs> and then a fisherman picks you up. Yeah. That would be cool if you just yeah. get sentenced to live there for a while. <laughs> yeah, dude, my sad boner was going off then for sure. Oh, no, Jake. That's why you were standing like that. <laughs> that's why you were trying to chase that's, that sea that's lion. Why, that's why I was giving everyone hugs with the butt out. <laughs> Well, boys, I had a great time on the trip. Yeah, I had a great time tonight. It's good to be back. Hell it's, yeah. It's fun talking, uh, eating people and pussy with you. Wouldn't want to talk about people, pussy, pizza eating with anybody else. Thank you, John. You said it. Furman, you want to promote anything before we go? John's going to be at St. Louis Helium in December. Thank December you. December 1 Thank you. He's the filmer for my, uh, for my. Came out great. Yeah, yeah. For my uh, little promo video that I put out on Instagram. Check it out. Give it a like. Buy some tickets. Please vacation in St. Louis. First weekend of (laughs) December. You probably don't live there, but you could go there. How about you, Mike? What do you got coming up? Uh, October 31st, I'll be at Helium Philly. Nice. And then November 4th, I'll be at Fat Lady Brewing. Oh, cool. Uh, 
Where is, is that in Philly or is that That's in Manny. I think Manny. Okay, cool. Yeah. Right yeah. On the main strip there. Hell oh, yeah. also, I want to mention this too. So anybody that buys a copy of my book on Perks up until December 31st, you're eligible for this wonderful excursion that I'm planning. The first uh, beginning of the year, I'm going to pick one person who has purchased my book and I am going to pay for your airfare, your hotel, all your expenses for a weekend. And on that weekend, we are going to go to a Phillies game. We're going to go to my favorite pizza place, which is Pika's Pizza in Upper Darby, Pennsylvania. Uh, and I'm taking you on a Philly true crime tour, which these two gentlemen have graciously agreed to accompany us on. So everyone that buys a copy of my book up until December 31st is going to be eligible. We're going to pick a random number. And whoever that random order number is, is going to get treated to a weekend like no other. For just buying the book. Just buying the book. That's in, that's insane. Yeah, One it's Lucky Dove is going to get it. Cool. And then also uh, accompanying us to the Phyllis game will be uh, Chris Wood from Oral Presentations and Ryan Shaner. That's awesome. And uh, more special guests to be added. But as of right now, that's what we have in store. And I cannot encourage you enough to buy a copy of the book Dude. at onperks.com. Any copy of the book, even if you just bought the fucking... Audiobook, you're eligible. Get so the don't package. worry about that you shit. You need to hold that yeah, book. It's so thing. fucking nice. Yeah, there, it has a unique smell to it. Yeah, and that's yeah. If you've already bought the book, yeah, listen to that. You can get fr a free trip to Philly and do all the shit with Mike. I mean, just buy another one. Give your constant <laughs> copy to an old coworker. Yeah, double your chances. <laughs> yeah, but for real, like we're picking. I'm picking a random order number, and I'm going to make this weekend as fun as possible for whoever wins this. No, there's no stipulations. If you live in fucking Australia and your number gets picked, I guess I'm paying fifteen hundred dollars for fucking airfare. Yikes, Mike! But you could have easily made that U.S. Yeah. only. I don't want to though. I think it'll be much funnier if I pick somebody who it's going to take an arm and a leg to get here, <laughs> just for a weekend to hang out in Delco with me. <laughs> I mean, that's Ed rules. That's awesome. Yeah, I would love to see someone fly from fucking Sydney. To fucking Philly for three days. <laughs> <laughs> you make them go back. <laughs> but no stipulations. Whoever fucking wins, you fucking win. And I will make this a weekend to remember for you. So go to onperks.com. Get any copy of my book. And uh, yeah, I cannot wait to pick the person for this nice. and have fun. Hell yeah. That's awesome. But uh, for all of you watching this, if you're watching this on Patreon, Thank you guys so much for all you do and for all you provide for us. It's because you were able to fucking take cool cool trips like we just took to Donner Lake. Videos are going to be coming out soon. Dude, shout out Cooper O'Hearn. Yeah, our buddy Cooper O'Hearn, um, it, it was our videographer for the trip and is going to be our videographer for every fucking thing we you do. You got some of the coolest footage God. I've ever taken a look at. I, he was incredible to fucking work with. Yeah, and it's I, such a fun hang too, man. It was he was incredible. So cool. In every aspect. He yeah. fucking nailed it. And uh, some of the footage he got was just... I mean, our goal was to just do the dumbest possible shit yeah. at these fucking sites, but Cooper did such a wonderful job that... Made it look like a movie. It's, it's cinematically beautiful. Yeah. yeah. So thank you to Cooper O'Hearn for making that happen, and thank you to, to you patrons for making that happen and allowing us to do fucking cool, retarded shit like that. If you're not a patron yet, if you're watching this for free, go to patreon.com slash stinkers. That's L-I-L-S-T-I-N-K-E-R-S. Become a patron. You're going to get early access to every episode. You're going to get extra episodes every month. You get free live. You get, I'm sorry. You get a live AMA every month. Uh, any book clubs we do, any movie watch alongs we do, um, all the extra fun shit that we do. Yeah. We're writing letters to prisoners now. Pretty wild. Did you yeah. mail the Jody Arias? I've not mailed it yet. Oh, thank God. Okay. <laughs> I want to see the envelope before you mail it. I want to make will. sure my return address is not on there. Oh, yeah, because you can't just fucking rip the envelope up and <laughs> stop it in a new one. But yeah, I'm going to mail that. By the time this is out, I will have mailed that. That's awesome. And uh, keep them crossed that she responds, but we're going to keep writing to these people until they respond. How quick do you think it would get there and like get to her? It shouldn't know? be more than a week. No. Mail. Yeah. Wow. Letter. So theoretically, we could have a response with Halloween. Man, she's going to want a Christmas present. We did this at the wrong time. I, I'll I give can't her one. Afford that. <laughs> what would you get Jody Arias for Christmas? A damn Yule log. Advent calendar. <laughs> I would. The bitch needs to find Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> no, I would get her a, a Cookie of the Month Club membership. That's, one Cookie a Month? Yep. That's all you get. <laughs> that seems like torture. It's it's the uh, the Donner Party cookie package. <laughs> the cookies you get less and less of a cookie each month. 
<laughs> so you're forced to eat your own fucking hand by November of the next year. Yikes. But all because of you, we're able to do shit like this. So yeah. thank you guys. And uh, I encourage you, if you're not a patron yet, to sign up at patreon.com slash little stinkers. Four bucks a month, $40 for the year. Get yeah. access to all the stuff we mentioned. And we're going to yeah. be doing more and more stuff, too. Just please come join us. I mean, and, that's one uh, Uber Eats meal. You know, for, for me, at least. <laughs> 40, 40 for the year? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I spent 40 today. <laughs> Three buy one, get ones, and a 20% off coupon. Damn. Yeah. You like that, really? John? Wow. Yeah, and the place got, you ordered from was right next to his house. <laughs> I can't be going out looking like this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, boys. Great reconnecting with you. Yeah. Haven't seen you in four days. <laughs> Good to see your handsome faces again, Jeff. It's great to see you again, brother. <coughs> yeah, we and missed you, Jeff. The gang's back at it. We're back together. What a wonderful time. We're never leaving, bitch. <laughs> All right. Love you guys, and we'll see you next time. Bye, everybody. Thank Bye. you. <laughs> so much fucked up shit to get into. Mail stinkers.